In our psalm today, we hear the beautiful poetic words, mercy and faithfulness have met. Mercy and faithfulness have met. All of us have, thank God, experienced mercy from someone. I mean, there's, there's no way we could have gone through life without at some stage messing up, making some sort of a mistake, whether it be at school or in family or, or definitely in your marriage, whatever it may be, where you've, you've made a mistake, you've forgotten something, you've not done something you said you would do, and then you say, sorry, and the other person says, it's all right, look, it's okay, let bygones be bygones, and we move on. So we've experienced other people's mercy, and it's, it's great, it's, it's, it's a lovely feeling to be forgiven, you know, when I, I recognize I was wrong, I was wrong, it was me, and, uh, and I'm sorry, and the other person says, look, it's okay. Uh, there's something very freeing about it. But if we flip it over, where we're the one who should be forgiving, that's, that's a lot harder, right? To be, to, to be re receptive towards someone's mercy uh, is easy enough. To be the one giving the mercy can be an awful lot harder. When it comes to the issue of forgiveness, um, I think we have a lot of misconceptions or misunderstandings as regards how forgiveness works. We can often think that I can forgive someone else once they ask for forgiveness, and until then, then I, then I won't. If they don't ask for forgiveness, then they won't get forgiveness. But that, in, in the real world, that can be very difficult because at times maybe I might have been hurt by a parent who is no longer alive, or a teacher who I haven't seen in 20, 30 years and probably never will see again. So I can actually be hurt by people who no longer have any effect on, on my life or no, no direct influence on my life, to their presence and yet their actions from years ago, the memory of the actions might still uh, seriously affect me. Uh, so it's important that we understand forgiveness correctly from uh, a Christian, from a Catholic perspective. That forgiveness does not mean just forgiving a person who asks for forgiveness, nor does it mean uh, that I should forgive someone, you know, when enough water has passed under the bridge, and sure, look, it, it was years ago, so, you know, let's just, let's just move on. This idea, like, of just moving on or getting over it kind of thing isn't really real either, or it's not really effective either. If I grew up in a, in, in a home where there was alcoholism, and I saw that every day, or in a, in a home where there was violence, and I saw that every day, I can't just say, it's water under the bridge, it's years ago, it, it, it's all fine now. I'm over it, I'm, you know, it doesn't work, the, the mind doesn't work that way. You can't just squash a memory like that, shove it into the, the recesses of your mind and pretend everything is okay. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. Eventually, it'll come up, it'll come up as anger, it'll come up as resentment, it'll come up as hatred, whatever it may be, but it, it, it'll fester, it'll fester in there. So, forgiveness isn't only that the other person has asked for forgiveness. It's not that enough time has passed and things have moved on. So what is it? When I'm called to forgive someone, and, and we, we, we pray this in every Our Father, forgive us as we forgive others. That's what I say to God. I say, God, forgive me as I forgive others. So this forgiveness thing is really important. When it comes to, to me forgiving someone else, to me showing mercy to someone else, I recognize, I see clearly, I admit, right, that a debt is owed to me. If someone has hurt me in some way, they may have taken from me my childhood, they may have taken from me my joy, they may have taken from me a sense of security. I grew up very insecure because I was always afraid that the schoolyard bully would pick on me, that this teacher would pick on me, or my mom, dad, brother, sister would pick on me, whatever it was. I recognize that, uh, that something has been taken from me. Something that maybe even can't be given back. No one can give you back your childhood. No one can give you back peace between the ages of 10 and 16, whatever it was. So something was taken from you that, that can't be given back. Okay? So this is, this is a serious thing. Like it, 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 there's, there's a kind of a, almost a fatality about it. it. It can't be undone. But pretending it never happened doesn't fix it. So I recognize that something was taken from me. I'm, I'm owed something. There's a debt here. And that word is important, right? There's a debt here, a debt of justice. And so what do I do with this debt? <clears throat> How does this debt get paid? 
the only way that we can really come to a place of peace, and in certain circumstances, the only place that we can really forgive is through God's grace, through the power of God. Not through our own power, through the power of God. Where I can say, I recognize this person is in debt to me. This person took something from me. They're in debt to me. But through the grace and power of Jesus Christ, I release them from their debt. I release them from their debt through Jesus' power. Jesus has paid all debts on the cross. And you might say, think that's either impossible or that's actually unfair. That might even be considered unjust. And yet haven't you and I been forgiven every single day by the Lord for what we've done against him? We start every Mass by saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. And maybe I've hurt people more than I know. But if I ask for forgiveness, God will forgive me. And so if God has forgiven me, am I not bound to forgive my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, my teacher, whoever it was? This is difficult. This is hard. But this is also real life. Our faith has everything to do with real life, real life decisions, real life relationships. This isn't just a thing for Sunday morning. This is, this is about you and me and the way we live our lives. And we can experience the healing power of God. We can experience his mercy in our lives and we can be givers of mercy too. So we ask the good Lord today in this uh, challenging psalm in a way, mercy and faithfulness of me, that we may be merciful as our heavenly father is merciful, that we may be faithful to his call to be his representatives here on earth, to be his consoling word, to be his merciful gaze to be his gentle hand. Amen.